Já vamos aqui, então, dar continuidade às nossas palestras do período da tarde. Uh, essa palestra so tem o tema Usinas Solares e Híbridas para o Desenvolvimento da Indústria do Hidrogênio Verde. Of, uh, green hydrogen. Here is our speaker. Senhor Rodrigo Salaia está ao vivo. Rodrigo Salaia uh, is with ele é presidente executivo da Associação Brasileira de Energia Solar, Fotovoltaica, Energy. Solar. Nossas boas-vindas. Ao senhor Rodrigo Salaia, seja muito bem-vindo. Rodrigo, welcome. Muito obrigado, boa tarde. Congratulations. Hello everyone. It's a great pleasure to be here with all of you. Thank you so much for the invitation and to be able to share our experience, all our learnings about this topic, which is a very promising topic, very important for Brazil, for the Northeast especially, and specifically Ceará. And so, and uh, green hydrogen as a new business opportunity for Brazil, for the Northeast, for Ceará. So on behalf of the Brazilian Association of Solar Energy, Brazilian Photovoltaic Service, we're also co-founder of the Global Council. We work nationally and states and municipalities with their policies and incentives for debates and FIEC as one of our uh, members. Now talking a little bit about green hydrogen in this debate, uh, we've learned a little bit about the different colors of hydrogen, the different technologies to produce hydrogen. So classification of green hydrogen and the color, so the way that it's produced. So in this sense, and we still need to standardize the colors. It's more known as hydrogen produced from renewable sources, solar and others. Uh, low temperatures and oxygen as a byproduct for uh, also the uh, gray so you have this byproduct that we know has negative impacts which is co2 we have blue hydrogen and the greenhouse gases and this impacts our climate and to produce hydrogen by nuclear energy uh, yellow or red or purple and we don't have emissions but there is nuclear waste, radioactive waste, that is produced uh, as we make this hydrogen. And when we look specifically at green hydrogen and production costs of green hydrogen around the world, and we look at the next few years thinking about the development of this technology and projects and price reductions with the increase of uh, the scale uh, for electrolysis, we see that Brazil has a huge potential to become a leader in production of this renewable and sustainable product uh, because of having renewable sources with very, very low cost. And this adds 
so that green hydrogen can be produced in a more competitive manner. So this is a study published in 2021 where a comparison was made of these production costs uh, looking until 2030. And so this is an amount close to one dollar per uh, kilo in production. And not all will have uh, production, you know, as the blue or the gray. But in the case of Brazil, our neighbors here, Chile, these countries already have a green hydrogen when we talk about the production of sustainable hydrogen, Brazil and Chile are really uh, major market potentials. And one of the main factors that means that Brazil have a significant advantage is related to the change in our renewable resources. Solar, for example, we have a resource that's double from Europe, for example, but also is the case of Japan and other temperate climate countries. And so when we compare, and these other countries will have a productive cost of this hydrogen, where it'll be very difficult until 2030 to find competitive markets for sustainable hydrogen from green origin. Usually uh, hydrogen produced by other sources. And that's what happens. And so we continue but in the Brazilian case this situation uh, is important also uh, Brazil can use combined sources you know because of its matrix to be an exporter of solutions that are related to hydrogen, not necessarily hydrogen itself directly, but our matrix is 83, 85% renewable. And the third position that we already see, installed power and the central decentralized generation. And so that's why it's important. So we have an average sales price in the market that's quite competitive, less than the average of other sources, so that Brazil can have individual use or combined sources. That's a major opportunity for the development of the new market. Now, if market analysts are correct, the future of our matrix will continue, and especially the growth of solar and wind and distributed storage with different technologies, batteries, but also chemical technologies such as uh, hydrogen itself. Uh, 
you know, using renew, abundant renewable resources, uh, storing this in uh, molecules, and then using this energy with uh, fuel cells. And to structure the national program. But it's not a green hydrogen program. So that's the way that we see this. Now it's important to say that recently, in 2022, there's been a bill that establishes a recommendation, a legal framework for hydrogen in our country. So it's the basis for us to take advantage of hydrogen as a source of energy in Brazil to encourage the use of what was called sustainable hydrogen. What is sustainable hydrogen? Green is sustainable, only green. I mean, that's a debate for us to have with good international practices. And as we look forward and what we can develop, applications, we see that hydrogen can become a major vector to help to decarbonize sectors, not only electric power, but sectors that use hydrogen today with non-green production, for example, replacing this hydrogen with green hydrogen. Uh, there are many applications, so it can be utilized in industrial processes, supporting uh, vehicles, heavy vehicles, aviation, for example, together with uh, light vehicles and processed molecules being transformed into ammonia, methanol for other industrial uses, solvents and others. However, it's possible to think about this technology for exports in the uh, domestic market. So there are different rates and facility, different barriers to incorporate green hydrogen. I mean, we see that some sectors so they already use hydrogen and a quick migration of this hydrogen that's not so sustainable to more sustainable hydrogen. Uh, refining fuels and the production of methanol. Production of aluminum, steel milling, steel, metal alloys, and reducing costs and increasing the sustainability of these productive sectors. There are some other applications of intermediate potential, if you will, for example, electric power uh, seasonally. And some others with heavy transportation, the use for uh, heating, 
and those that have greater complexity and the use of technology. And so, at the end of last year, we had a publication in ANEL 2021 that established conditions for the development of hybrid plants. We can't confuse that with hydroelectric plants. And so they're hybrid and have to do with generation, renewable, solar, and uh, a wind. And there's a huge potential for collaboration or biomass, but can also be renewables with fossil fuels. And so diesel generators, natural gas with solar and photovoltaic and biomass. And so it's possible now from a regulatory standpoint, projects that have different technologies and lower costs and better competitiveness. So it's a very versatile source with our great solar potential. There are major gains, safety and security, contracting infrastructure, and uh, land that can be used for different technologies. And now, many more projects moving forward with R&D and some plants already in an initial development phase. In this sense, we believe that hybrid projects can generate more stable electric power in different hours of the day, so we can take advantage of uh, electrolyzers. Yeah, I'm almost done. No, I don't want to interrupt you. Just to add something, actually, you have, uh, if you want, you have another six minutes. Ah, ah, wonderful. Amazing. Uh, I'm basically on my last slide, so we have enough time. Just wanted to tell you. Thank you. Right, so we have here an opportunity in these different sources and technology to generate electric power that's more stable uh, during the day, during the day or the months, uh, during the whole year and between the different years in such a way that we can control the main costs, production costs of green hydrogen, which is investment cost in capex of electrolyzers, uh, the acquisition of the system, the infrastructure uh, to do electrolysis of the water, hydrogen and oxygen, to operate as close as you can to the maximum capacity of generation different hours of the day and throughout the year. And this is very important for us to optimize these investments and have uh, production costs of hydrogen that are lower. You know, kilo of production, a cubic meter. So, you know, this could make a difference in the project. And since photovoltaic, even with solar, there is a 30% capacity. And so the combination of solar and photovoltaic with other technologies will allow for this energy, competitive and cheap energy, 
when the sun is actually available, can be complemented with low-cost energy during hours of the day when solar photovoltaic is not operating. So we really believe that quite pro possibly the optimal combination of these plants can go through different sources so that solar be used to generate and deliver most of its energy for electrolysis. But in those times of the day or times of the year where you have less available and operating in the maximum capacity, maximizing your investments. So that's what I wanted to share with you. These, uh, this sort of like food for thought. I would like to thank our 800 members that help us every day to do our work. It's great to be sharing uh, our experience uh, with you today and to say that all of us are in a learning phase about green hydrogen. This is a promising and we hope that the states and the federal government especially green hydrogen and there are markets and segments to acquire. And chemical products with added value. Thank you very much, everyone, for your attention. Alguns fabricantes de eletrolizadores estão trabalhando em aplicações de pequeno porte, inclusive for, uh, residenciais. Small scale, like residential. Observa alguma viabilidade para o hidrogênio na geração distribuída no mesmo prazo estimado para aplicação industriais, para as aplicações industriais, ou seja, 2030? Ótimo, obrigado pela pergunta. Well, when we think about applications of the internal Brazilian market, for the internal consumer market, um, I showed you a graph talking a little bit about the scale. The more scale you have, the greater will be the competitiveness, so the quicker you optimize this hydrogen in a given application. Thinking about this, the lower the profile of that client, of that consumer, the uh, more difficult it is to find the economic feasibility for that client. To have a lower scale equipment that can be competitive, and natural costs of the equipment 
and also you're decreasing not only the offer of the oxygen, but also there is the same effect of increasing uh, the price. On the other hand, because in fact it's very difficult for us to forecast the future, but those that have higher costs so uh, green or, or, or gray hydrogen, today these consumers are talking about something more expensive than a major uh, industry or major consumer. So it's difficult to say if it will be economically feasible or not. Once Brazil uh, has favorable conditions, uh, that are above average, then probably we'll have uh, good answers. But I would start imagining that this feasibility is going to start with larger uh, uh, electrolyzers. Right, thank you. We have another three minutes. This is the last uh, question. Considering do Brasil, the potentials of Brazil, do verde, comparado com os outros países, compared to other Solar, countries, projeta alguma evolução numérica de usinas solares fotovoltaicas no Brasil? Se sim, poderia por if favor yes. exemplificar esse panorama? Vou repetir, sem problema. Vamos lá. Right, so considering the potential of Brazil in reducing the costs of green hydrogen when compared to other countries, is there a certain uh, projection for photovoltaic production in Brazil? If yes, could you uh, exemplify this? Yeah, I understand. So possibly this will come from government initiatives, countries like Germany, and to reduce the consumption of fossil fuels and you're going to have to use new fuels from sustainable sources with green hydrogen. This will create a consumer market that can have interests uh, like in Brazil with greater competitiveness. So our challenge, depending on the location of the consumer market, what is our logistics cost and the difference in price for a market like Japan or Germany and the transportation costs of this hydrogen, does that make it competitive? So there's nothing structural so then it makes sense to think how much power we can have with solar and wind and hybrid projects that we need to uh, supply this demand locally or internationally so I reinforce once again you know a bill a legal framework for hydrogen one of the intentions of this bill so uh, gasoline 
and as a way to also encourage this market and uh, create demand for the development of a local uh, chain. This strategy that was applied quite successfully in biofuels could be applied also successfully in the case of hydrogen uh, via a law establishing a schedule or uh, incorporation of, uh, of green hydrogen in the hydrogen that's utilized uh, by Brazil today. A mixture that makes this fossil fuel uh, more sustainable. Accelerate this market and with this encourage more solar and wind power plants for this sector. From a technical standpoint, just to give you an idea, uh, there's a potential more than 28,500 gigawatts in photovoltaic. I mean, we're talking 28.5 terawatts of technical potential, if you will. So, at a given moment, you know, compare with photovoltaic solar potential, 28,000 uh, gigawatts. And so, you know, that's what it is. Okay, thank you. A round of applause.